Arrays are an essential part of many different programming languages, and it's inevitable that you'll encounter them pretty often throughout your time in Unreal Engine. Arrays can also be kind of complicated to understand at first, so in this video I want to try to make them as clear as possible. So I'm in a blank first person template right now, and I've created an actor called Array Example. Let's jump into it. So what exactly is an array? Well an array is just a variable that can hold more than one value. They're useful for a variety of different things. If you're dealing with managing several different enemies, if you're dealing with moving platforms between a list of vectors, there are tons of uses for arrays in Unreal Engine. So let's have a look at how to create them. So if we go over to the variables tab here and just add a variable, we'll call it names and I'll change the type to name. If we select the variable and come to the details panel over here, and we click on this little icon, you're going to see we have a few different options here, and one of them is Array. This grid symbol here is the symbol for Arrays in Blueprint. Now if I compile and I go to the Details panel, you're going to see we have our Names variable, and then this section here that says Zero Array Elements with a plus and a trash can icon. If we click on the Add Element button here, you can see we can add a bunch of values to our variable. Let me just delete those. Let's start with less for now. Let's do three elements. Now the way arrays work is each value in the array is in a slot that has an index. So this first value here is an in index zero. The second value here is an in index one. And this third value here is an in index two. And it's important to be aware that the indexes do start at zero. This is one of the main causes of confusion for people who are first learning about arrays. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some values in here. So we'll add a few names. The first one we can make Tina. The second one we'll make Sally. And the third one we'll make Jim. Okay. So now we have a names variable with three names in it, Tina, Sally, and Jim. Now if I drag this variable out and I do a get, you're going to see it looks a little bit different than what variables normally look like. We have that grid icon. And the first question you're going to have is how do we do anything with this? Well, if we drag off of this and we go to utilities and array, you're going to see we have a lot of different nodes here for dealing with arrays. Now we're not going to go through every single one of these that would take forever. And a lot of them are very self-explanatory. We are going to talk about the ones that you'll encounter more often. The first and simplest one is get, and we're going to do this get a copy. So for the sake of demonstrating throughout this video, I'm just going to use the F key and let's have a look at this now. So the get node will return a value at a given index and that index is right here. So right now we have index zero selected. If I do a print string and I print this out, What you'll see is it'll print out Tina. So let's just go and drag our blueprint into the world and let's make sure auto receive input is enabled so that it can detect that F key press and we'll hit play. And if I press F, you'll see we get Tina. Okay, and if I change this to say two, we'll get Jim. Pretty simple. Now, when you're using this node, Typically, you're not going to type values directly into here. You're typically going to have some sort of manner of determining which index your value is at. So, for example, if you're dealing with, say, grid based movement, you may be using an algorithm to determine the correct index because with arrays, things can move and change during runtime. That's one of the strong suits of arrays in this simple example it's pretty easy to see where each name is but when you're dealing with arrays for real for example if you have an array of enemies enemies are going to be dying and spawning in and the array values are going to be changing throughout runtime so you're typically not just going to type a value in here let's kind of take a look at this by looking at another node so i'm just going to copy this names array variable to keep it clean and what we'll do is we'll type in length and this is going to return the length of the array, which means the amount of elements that are in the array. Now, there's something you got to keep in mind here. Let's plug this into the print string node. And let's hit play. And you're going to see that it prints out three. 
Now, let's just say we want to print out the last element in this array. There's actually already a node dedicated to doing that called last index. But for the sake of example, let's just do it with the length node. So you might think, well, we can just plug this in and that'll give us the last index of the array. But you got to remember, arrays start at zero. So this is going to print out three and we want the index of two. So we're going to have to come out of here and subtract one. This is a common thing that you do with arrays. And now if I hit play and I press F, you'll see we get Jim, which is indeed the last value in the array. Again, there's already a node that does this called last index that we could plug in here. And it does the exact same thing. All right, so that's one method of getting values out of an array. Another one and one that you'll see very commonly is the for each loop. And we're going to talk more about this node with another example later in the video. But just to demonstrate real quick, let's type in for each loop. So what this node does is loops through your array and it prints out every value and the index for that value. Now, each time it does a loop, it goes through this loop body pin. And then when it's done looping through the entirety of the array, it fires the completed pin. So what we're doing here is we're looping through the array and each time we are printing out the value. So it's going to go. It's going to do the first loop and print out Tina. It's going to do the second loop and print out Sally and the third loop and print out Jim. So if I hit play and I press F, you'll see it prints out all three names. Now, of course, if I copy this print string and plug it into the completed. And we'll just type finished. You'll see that after it prints out all the values, it prints out finished. Now, this is a node that has a lot of different use cases. I could never possibly go through all of them. Again, later in the video, we'll look at a more concrete example of how to use this. An example I can think of off the top of my head is say you're making a zombies like game and you pick up a nuke and you want to kill all of your zombies. Well, you may have an array of all your zombies. You'll loop through them and run their death function. Another time you might use for each loops is when you need to find a particular value and you have no way of determining what index it's at. In that case, you're going to want to use the for each loop with break most likely. And we'll talk about this node again later in the video when we get to that example. But now let's move on. We've talked about a few ways to get values from arrays. What about changing or setting values? The first one we can look at here is set array element. And the way this node works is you supply it with an array, an index, and an item that you want to add. So in this case, we're setting a specific index to a specific value. So in this case, if I were to say, want to change index two from Jim to another name, I could put in two. And we could change Jim to, let's say, Agatha. And then we'll get and we'll print out that index. And you'll see that we've changed it to Agatha. You can also use this to add new items to an array. So as it stands, we still have Tina, Sally, and Jim as the default values. If I instead set this index to three, now, instead of changing one of the other values to Agatha, we'll just add Agatha as a new value. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and print out index three after we do the set array element. And what you're going to see is it prints out none. And the reason for that is currently index three doesn't exist. So in order to set that value, we have to check this size to fit box and that will add the new index. But there is something to keep in mind with this. If, for example, I try to set index 20 to Agatha, well, arrays can't just skip indexes. We can't go 0, 1, 2, and 20. So what's going to happen is it's going to create a bunch of empty indexes all the way up to 20. So let's have a look at that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set my array to instance editable. And that way, when I hit play and I press F, if I depossess my pawn and select the array example actor in the world, then go to the details panel, we can actually see the values in that array. And you're going to see we have our first three initial values here, but then we have a bunch of blank values all the way up to index 20 where we have Agatha. So this set array element node can be useful if you need to set a specific element to a specific value. 
But if you're just trying to add a new value to the end of your array, there's a better node and it is simply add. So if I delete this and I instead just add Agatha using the add node, it's simply going to add Agatha to element three. So let's try that. Let's try that out. And if I keep pressing F, and again, I select my array example in the outliner. You have to deselect it first, I guess, to see this. You're going to see that it actually adds Agatha over and over and over again. Now, if you wanted to prevent that from happening, you could use the add unique node. And if I type Agatha in here, let's just delete this. You'll see that if I press F, it'll keep printing it out. But if I press F8, and look, it only adds it once to index 3. So we've looked at a lot of the common nodes that we use with arrays in Unreal Engine. Again, there are a ton more. Another common one that I use is is valid index. And what this will do is tell you if an index exists. It's not telling you if the value in that index exists. It's telling you if the index itself exists. So for example, we have index 0, 1, and 2. If I were to type in 20 and print out the value of this, it's going to be false because index 20 doesn't exist. Another common node is contains. So I could type in gym in here, and this would return true because the array does have the value gym. Whereas if I type in Walter, this would return false. Some more common ones we have are clear. This will literally just empty the entire array. We have the remove item node. This will remove an item by its value. So if I were to come in here and type Jim, that would remove Jim. Then we have remove index, which will remove an item by its index. So if I put zero in here, it's going to remove Tina. All right, so now that we've looked at some of the basics, let's move on to a more concrete example of using arrays. So what we'll do is this. We'll add some point lights to our scene, and let's just say we want to trigger them all with a single switch. Now, real quick, I know that I do this exact same example in my event dispatchers video, and this is just another way to achieve the same thing. I will say the method of using event dispatchers is probably a bit more optimized, but I still want to do this for the sake of example. So I'm going to add some point lights in. I'll just duplicate this across. And then in our array example, I will add a box collision. All right, we'll select that and we'll right click and add event for box. We'll do on component begin overlap. And then off the other actor, I'll type is a, and we're going to check if this is a BP first person character. That way we know if it's our character colliding with the box. Okay. Now what we can do is we can add an array of point lights. And we want this first one here that just says point light. We don't want point light component. We want it to be an object reference. And we'll just rename this lights. And we'll set it to instance editable and compile. All right, let's move this up. And now if we look in the details panel, we can actually set all those lights right here. Now, I know that this is not an optimized way of doing this. This creates a bunch of hard references to these lights but I want to keep it simple for the sake of demonstrating arrays. This isn't a video about optimization or blueprint communication. So what we're going to do is select each of these lights and you can just click this little eyedropper button here and select each of these. And real quick, one more thing I'm going to do is size up this box collision. We'll do 50 by 50 by 50 and we'll, also turn off hidden in game so that I can see where it is during runtime. And we'll just move it up and bring it over here. I'm going to press the N key to bring it down. Great. So now what we can do is we can use that for each loop node that I showed you before. And when we collide with the box, since they're all on by default, we'll just turn them off. 
And to do so, I'm just going to pull off of this and I'm going to type in point light to get the point light component. And we'll set intensity and we'll just set the intensity to zero. Okay, so now when we enter the box, it's going to loop through each of the lights in the array and it's going to set their intensity to zero. Cool. All right, so now I want to show you something that you may wind up doing kind of often when you don't have a good way of determining where a specific item is in an array. So let's just go into our level. Let's select this light right here and let's change its intensity to 20. And let's just say we need to find the light that has a, an intensity of 20 for whatever reason. Maybe in a real example, we're dealing with enemies and we need to find the enemy with the lowest health. In this case, we can obviously figure out pretty easily just by looking in the editor which index this light is in. But in a real example, you really might not have any good way of telling. So what we could do is use a for each loop and drag off of this and do get intensity. And we can check if the intensity equals 20. And that's all fine and dandy. But here's the thing. Let's just say our array has a thousand elements in it. And the point light with intensity 20 is at index, I don't know, 10. Well, we're going to hit index 10, but then we're going to keep looping through all 1000 of those elements for no reason. So this is a great use for the for each loop with break. So let's have a look at that. Let's just delete all this. Let's drag out our lights and type in for each loop with break. Then we'll drag off of this and it's good practice when you're dealing with actors to check if the element is valid. So we'll drag off of this and do an is valid node. Then we'll get point light component. We'll get intensity. And we'll check if it equals. 20. Okay, now we can do a branch. Now notice on this for each loop with break node, we have this break input pin. So if we hit the element that has an intensity of 20, what we can do is come off the true of the branch and plug into that break. Now this is messy, so let's double click to add a reroute node and we'll add another one here. And what's going to happen is we'll loop through each element until this branch is true. Then it's going to hit this break. It's going to stop looping and immediately go out the completed node. So what we can actually do before we break is we can promote this point light to a variable. And we'll just call it bright light. Okay. Now we can come out of the completed node and let's do a validated get here because maybe none of them equal 20, right? And we can just get the point light component. And in this case, for example, we'll just turn it off. So we'll set intensity to zero, compile. All right, let's hit play and let's try it out. And you can see that the one with an intensity of 20 turned off. This is something that I find myself doing kind of often when there's a specific element that you're looking for or group of elements and you have no good way of determining where it is in the array. And this is just a small look into the type of stuff you'll be doing with arrays. Again, there's tons and tons of use cases for arrays and I could never possibly cover all of them in one video. Now, like I said, there's a lot of different nodes in regards to arrays, and I highly recommend you check them all out and experiment with them. But this is where I'm going to end the video. So if you guys have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them in the comments down below. You can also join my Discord and ask me there. If you enjoyed this video, consider slapping a like on it. And for more content from me, consider subscribing. Thank you guys for watching, and I wish you the best of luck with your projects.